with the May primary election approaching here in Pope County, River Valley Leader wanted to give residents a chance to get to know some of the candidates better. We sat down with some of the candidates of the contested races for the primary election and talked to them about what they would like to accomplish if elected. Every candidate was given a chance to come in, but some chose to decline. Now is your chance to get to know the candidates that came in a little bit better. Take a look. I'm here with Ben Cross, one of the candidates for Justice of the Peace District 3. Ben, thank you so much for being here. I'm glad to be here. And um, to tell you a little bit about Ben, he is a current Arkansas State Police officer, has served with them for about 22 years now. He is also a um, U.S. Army Persian Gulf War veteran, um, grew up here in Pope County and um, graduated from Dover High School and Arkansas Tech University, so Pope County is home. It is. Been here all my life and other than service in the military and service with the state police that carries me around the state. I'm, I'm a hometown guy. Ben, tell me a little bit about what was your inspiration to run for this office? Well, I've been in public service really since I went in the military at the age of 17 and went in the National Guard and went through that process. And so I've been in a uniform in service to my country, <clears throat> the state of Arkansas and in the city here in Russellville for the last 25 to 30 years. And uh, having been in state government and dealt, of course, with the federal government, it's, uh, it's led me to want to give back to my community. I serve on several board of directors for nonprofit organizations. And, you know, that service compiled with being in government service for so long, it was kind of just a natural progression to, to want to get into local politics. Now, um, kind of moving on to the next question, what do you think is the biggest issue facing Pope County right now? The single biggest issue is the same as it is nationwide, it's, it's budgetary concerns. Uh, Arkansas has been very fortunate in this downturn of the economy to be able to maintain revenue streams and be able to maintain a, a budget, a balanced budget. And unlike the federal government, you know, the state, counties, and cities have to operate on a balanced budget. We can't deficit spend. And Polk County has been able to accomplish this consistently without any layoffs and uh, without any, you know, loss of services to the citizens. And so uh, having a steady budgetary, you know, a steady budget with a steady income source is the number one thing we got to look at. And uh, there's several proposals that uh, I can think of that would actually help us achieve those goals. Now, if you were to get elected, what is it that you want to accomplish? <clears throat> I want to, first and foremost, is be able to get along with all of our elected officials. There's eight constitutional officers, the county judge, the sheriff, the tax collectors, the assessors, the clerks, all those people that you and I have elected into those positions. And my standpoint is it's not my position to micromanage them. You and I elected them to run those specific offices. It's my job as a JP to come in and approve the budgets that they submit and appropriate those monies they request. And as long as they're operating within their budgets, I want to be able to work hand in hand with them and not have any opposition and not have any, uh, you know, heated discussions about how they're doing their jobs. Now, looking on to the future, if you were to get elected, what is it that you want to see Pope County look like in five years? Well, uh, obviously we want to, any goal of any person running for office is to make something better than when you came in and establishing more sources of revenue so we're not so dependent on state turnbacks, which is where the greatest majority of our money comes from is, is our one mill tax on property that we have here in the county. It's a general revenue. And then we have uh, state turn backs and state income that comes from uh, sales tax. And so if we can develop other sources of income, that would be one of my primary goals. Uh, to continue with Judge Jim Ed Gibson's road program, he's probably been the most progressive county judge in Pope County history as far as uh, where our roads used to be and where they are and so he's got a very progressive road program that I intend to support. And now in closing, is there anything else you'd like to add about running for this position or anything you'd like to say to the voters in particular? Well, I would ask all the voters of Pope County to consider the, the person, not necessarily the party. Uh, I'm running as a Republican. Uh, I have no Democratic opponent, either my or my opponent. And so ours will be decided in the May primary, so I urge people to get out and vote. Remember, early voting starts May 7th, and uh, I just urge people to get out and vote. De definitely. Thank you so much, Ben, for being Thank here. You. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I am here with Dusty Hampton, current Justice of the Peace um, on the Polk County Quorum Court. Uh, you are running 
for District 3, but you are currently serving in District 5, and the redistricting process happened. It kind of changed things a little bit. Um, he is in his second term um, as a JP. Um, his wife and he both graduated from Lamar High School and went to Tech, graduated from Tech with an agri-business degree and have been a Polk County resident for about 16 or so years. Now, uh, Dusty, thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you. Thank you for asking me to come. No problem. Um, just to get started, tell me a little bit about your inspiration um, to run for another term. Tell me what the inspiration was. You know, I, I think um, the first time I ran for office, uh, there were several things that, that motivated me to run. Um, one of them is obviously paying taxes. Um, I'm in the farming business and and uh, I've got several poultry houses and just going up to the collector's, tax collector's office and writing a check to pay taxes, it, it kind of gets you interested in what your tax dollars are being used for, how efficient they are. And, um, you know, that, that got my interest in, in, in running. I think another big thing was just um, I wanted to learn, you know, about about county government. How does county government work? Um, and it's been a tremendous educational process for me over the last few years. Um, and saying that, um, probably this will be the last time I run for office, you know, as as for for a JP. But um, I want to I want to run to try to keep things moving in the right direction. Um, especially financially, um, but I, I feel like I over you know overall the Quorum Court is uh, they do a pretty good job. We've got an excellent county judge, and and um, you know I, you know mainly just to just to try to keep things in the direction that they're going. And, and well, good thing you said that. The next question is talking about like, what do you think is the biggest issue facing the county at the moment? If you want to keep things going in the right direction, what do you think is kind of the biggest issue facing the county? You know, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, is finances, and 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 really, we're not in a situation to where the county is broke, but we're also not in a situation to where um, we have an abundance of money. The uh, the revenues haven't been increasing like they have in the past. Uh, you know, traditionally over over time, the county's revenues have have increased. You know, like seven, eight, nine percent a year, and um, our revenues have not done that. So it's it it's um, it puts a, you know a little bit of a um, pressure on the court and the elected officials to try to run things efficiently and cost effective. Um, in saying that, you know, the county's growing. Um, we just done a census and, and so when the county gets bigger, you know, you have to provide, you know, you have to provide services for that stuff. So there's a, um, there's a balance there. So um, probably, you know, the biggest issue is not only currently is, is the financial aspect of, of funding everything, but also planning, uh, planning for the future to make sure that um, we'll be able to provide them services as the county grows without having to raise our revenue sources, without having to raise taxes. Right. Now, so, if you were to be elected for another term, what is it that you want to accomplish in this term? You know, I'd prob probably in, in, in answering that, I'd say uh, the same things that I've worked for for the last couple of years that I've been on the court. Um, one of the things that I've I've been pretty passionate about and 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 worked to do is is to try to create a surplus that the county has of of putting some money back and um, you know I think right now we've put back a, about 1.1 million dollars maybe a little bit more it's it's um, you know not a great deal of money when your budget's around 22 million dollars but um, it's been a challenge to get that done. And <clears throat> I've had a lot of people ask me, say, what are you wanting to do with, why are you wanting to put money back? What are you wanting to do with that money? And um, it's not really that I want to do anything with the money, but I think normally uh, that it allows you to plan. If you have some way of financing things, it, it allows you to plan. And, 
And uh, most of the time when a tax gets passed or something happens, usually the sky is falling. You know, people come in and say, we've got to do this now. We've got to do this now. Uh, we've got to fund this. It's, it's way behind. And um, so you wind up passing a tax to fund some particular project or, or fund some particular thing. And um, them taxes never go away. So in, in my opinion, we need to put money back, save money. And, and um, when we have something that has to be done, you know, you pay cash for it and, and you, you plan for the future. So um, if we can operate now with a surplus, then the infrastructure and the facilities that we have to build and maintain for future services as the county grows, um, we won't have to raise taxes to, to do that stuff in the future. So. Well, you mentioned planning for the future, and that's a good transition, because the next question would be, where would you like to see this county five years down the road? You know, and, and, and planning for the future, uh, this question is really a question that has to be hashed out over time with the quorum court in, in, a, in a planning phase. But the first thing that pops to my mind um, With, with all the different services that the county has, I, I think at some point you have to prioritize what's, in, what's the most important um, down to what you consider to be the least important and then fund them accordingly. And so different people have different opinions. But uh, I would say that the top of the priority list for most people is gonna be emergency services. Um, EMS services uh, in the county as well as uh, in the city and um, there's there's some things that I'd like to see uh, accomplished over time but um, I think that's something we probably need to start investing in and, and start investing in heavily you know for the future to provide that service because the county is responsible for providing emergency services to the city of Russellville as well as all the other cities in the county. So I'm thinking we need to probably look at building, um, expanding them operations and, and um, I'd really like to see um, the Dover station and the Atkins station to be uh, pretty well manned and staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and, and you know maybe even building a new central station here in Russellville because the call volume here in Russellville you know increases consistently so um, right now I, you know I'm thinking probably the top the top thing we need to look at is probably emergency services. In closing is there anything else you want to say about running for this position or anything you'd like to say to the voters in particular? You know yeah um, I've enjoyed serving the public over the you know, the last three or four years. But uh, I'd say I've probably gotten more out of this as a person serving on the court. As You know, I, th I think I got elected when I was 28 years old. And um, I'm, I'm 32 now. Um, I've learned more from from this this experience probably than I'll ever be able to give give back to Pope County. So, um, it's, it's, it's been something that I've, that I've enjoyed. Now, if you do get elected, you said you may not run again. Um, would, could we see you run for anything else, any type you know, of other political? You know, you never rule anything out. It's, it's possible, you know, there's a possibility. Uh, it, I think I, before I ran for office, I always seen people, they'd say, hey, you know, they were willing to serve. And, and, I always thought to myself, oh, what do you mean? I mean, you get paid to do this, and I get paid to serve on the quorum court. It's, it's, uh, they write me a check every month, and, and uh, hey, that's, that's a benefit. Uh, everybody likes to see a paycheck come in the mail. So it's, um, but also there's a, there's a part of the job that comes along with it. If you're a leader and if you... Um, you take, you know, you take positions and, and, and um, lead different circumstances. It's, you can't make everybody happy. And um, 
even if you want to do, every decision that you make, everything that you get involved in, there's going to be a segment of the population that's just not happy. And um, it may be this group on this topic and another group on another topic. And, and you, you pretty much just have to, have to do and make the decision that you feel like's right and, and hope that you're representing people and doing things that's the best. But that's the bad part of the job is that nobody wants to make anybody unhappy. And, um, you know, uh, over time, whether people want to admit it or not, you know, somebody might sometimes say, hey, I, um, they don't bother me. But that's not true. It does. You know, it, it does bother you. So um, I, I think it's, it's important to be involved in your community and to work and to try to make things better and to preserve what we have. But it's also something that, uh, that you need to get in and out of. And, uh, and um, you know, I have a business that I run, a you know, farm that I operate and, and young kids. And so um, I want to I wanna work and, and stay involved in government, but, you know, there's, there's times where I need to just go back to the farm and and uh, be with my family and, and kind of take some of that stress load off and, and maybe a few years and then get back involved, get back involved again. So, um. Well, thank you again for being with us. I appreciate it. Thank right. you. Thank you.